Thank you very much for that. And actually, thank you very much all, uh, especially to Elena and anne Katrin for organizing this uh, conference, which I really appreciate because I feel it's another step we can follow and work with it in the future also. The conference Elena mentioned actually brings me at the beginning to my own institution, and I would like to introduce it just very briefly because we are in a um, very nice situation when we are thinking and actually preparing a new project, new exhibition building, which would also host a research center, library, and so on. And the purpose of the institution from the start to the end is actually connecting Central Europe. When I'm speaking about Central Europe, it's something we intuitively all uh, understand, of course, as some sort of, a, let's say, heritage of Habsburg monarchy and all these thinking about some central, um, uh, let's say, not just national state, which is in between Germany and Russia. And it's kind of a flux and very problematic and there is a huge mythology around it. But still, uh, I think it's kind of a vivid and uh, we still can think about the global issues and huge issues which connect the whole world uh, from this kind of a perspective. And this is actually my point. So when I'm thinking about Central Europe, I don't think necessarily very narrowly, but I really would like to go from different perspective towards uh, more important topics. Okay, so actually this is my favorite map of Central Europe. <laughs> And as you can see, it's kind of uh, surprising. So let's keep to that. Uh, let's keep this kind of a point of view, which uh, really might just surprise us. And we can play with it. It's Friday, late evening. So we can just imagine different world uh, and then we are living in. I would like to introduce my institution, as I said, uh, just a few uh, remarks for, uh, for the start. And also some sort of a metaphor. I would like to follow the whole um, opening of this discussion, which should be short, I promise. It's actually a map, uh, urbanistic plan of all modes, and the red thing you can see in the center is not uh, yet uh, existed building of a Central European Forum, which would operate there. Uh, the one institution which still exists is Olomouc Museum of Art and Central European, uh, European Forum is uh, a branch which covers, uh, let's say, uh, art of 20, 21st century and uh, the new building should be something which should, should visualize it, really give it some sort of a perspective. As you can see, it's a graphic, <laughs> it's a full of graphic elements. And this uh, I will explain in a minute. The architectural plan was made by Jan Šepka, uh, kind of nice name, uh, operating or working in uh, not just in Czech Republic, but in Central Europe as such. And as you can see, it's a space which really has a lot of small and very different spaces we can use for different um, type of presenting of art, research of art, and so on. Uh, this uh, is just a visualization, uh, not necessarily it's going to look like that, but again, I would like to use it uh, as a metaphor in a minute. And this is the whole surrounding, uh, also the connecting uh, the old building with the, the new one. The point is that I am in the museum as a curator of graphic arts collection, and from the start I was working with graphic print, with technological image, uh, as something which is really visually built. You need to know how the process works, you need to know all the phases, and you have to be able to imagine the final print as some sort of a flux of all these phases and all these layers, which is kind of a logical problem, of course. And for the artist, it really means that somehow it's <laughs> very intuitive, and, uh, intuitive on one element or one hand, but on the other, it's really it's a logical work. You have to be able, like the architect, really think of all of these pieces you are trying to build somehow together. Uh, I very much admire one Polish theoretician, Dorota Folga Januszewska. She was also director of the National Gallery in Warsaw for some time. And she came with a term I really like to use, and it's pangraphism. The point is that all modern and contemporary art is somehow uh, built on graphic elements and graphic thinking about the world, about organization, about working with small elements, connecting them together. And this leads me to Bruno Latour almost always because what is he about or what is he trying to somehow establish this kind of connection between pieces and trying to make this kind of a relational uh, connections, actor network uh, and so on. So this is something I would like to follow from the architecture to the work as such. And uh, to also, uh, this is also uh, what leads me to the exhibition I would like to present now with theoretical background. Uh, Merle Ponty and his theory of vision uh, and how we approach the world uh, in a visual way uh, is, um, let's say, just a metaphorical approach, once again. Uh, the other theoretician I'm working uh, with quite often is Alva Noé, American philosopher who somehow connects, let's say, cognitive sciences with philosophy and analytical approaches. And for quite a long time, I, I was really interested in pragmatism as such. And I actually thought this is the only way how we, uh, I, I'm able to approach it, let's say. 
the project uh, uh, we worked on in Prague and we are still developing it somehow. It really is coming from my experience with graphic print, with this kind of work with elements and so on. And it focuses on aesthetic experience because aesthetic experience is something which is uh, really the base. Uh, through that we are approaching the world, we are trying to make connections, we are building rational analysis and so on. Alva Noe, as a theoretician, works with the concept of entanglement and also another concept which I kind of like, uh, which he calls strange tools. He thinks about art as a strange tool, the way how we can approach the world, how we can reconnect with it, how we can reconstruct it. Uh, and uh, for that purposes, he thinks about experience, aesthetic experience as something which is bodily experienced, uh, which means that we are moving in the space, we are working with the space, we are approaching the space as such, and things which are in it. Uh, uh, this kind of work, uh, or rework through the artwork actually, uh, means that the artwork is some sort of a raw material, something we uh, are using as a, let's say, a revolutionary piece, even though it might be just uh, some traditional work of art, painting in the end or a sculpture in 21st century, it's something which is raw and which is somehow also uncanny in many ways when we approach it as such. Uh, we can approach it as a scientist, we can work with scientific uh, knowledge, we can try to make categories and so on, but still it's kind of an interpretation uh, we can always de uh, redevelop and it's uh, not possible to make it objective in any uh, elements and it all starts with perception. Uh, just to uh, close it, uh, what is interesting in the end is this kind of aesthetic phenomena. We are in this way building and we are building it uh, always in a space we, uh, when we re-establish the position of the viewer, when we re-establish the position of artworks. And somehow I don't want to end up with installations, art and so on, but I would like to still follow aesthetic and aesthetic approach as the base uh, we are trying to resolve in the end. Uh, these are a few images from the exhibition we've built in Prague, uh, and I will give space to artists who participated in the selection, uh, which are also part of another project we are working on. Uh, you can see the space uh, which is blurred, which is uh, full of, let's say, intact pieces, uh, which somehow has uh, this kind of energy, which is colorful and so on, uh, which also contrasts different types and different materials, which might be raw. On the other hand, they are quite aesthetic. And we have this kind of um, feeling that all these pieces are connected, although they are from different contexts, different ateliers, from different artists. The project was called Dig Deep. Uh, it was actually uh, the project which was uh, uh, proposed, let's say, uh, by Slovak Forum, Slovak Institute in Prague. And sh it should have been a project which somehow covers the whole Central European area. Uh, on the other hand, it shouldn't have been the pro uh, project or exhibition which would be openly political. But what I was interested in is what was actually to ask these kind of a question. What does it mean to I have connections uh, via Central Europe? What does it mean to work with contemporary arts? which uh, doesn't have to be politically uh, uh, engaged open or what does it even have to, uh, what does it ever uh, even mean to have this kind of artworks, but uh, which are somehow latently open for discussion and for uh, public cooperation, let's say. And I invited uh, five artists, actually uh, three of them are here now and uh, will have the chance to present their work and hopefully we'll somehow end up with conclusion which might illustrate uh, the whole thinking of the project. Alicia Bilavska, uh, Sari Ember is missing, unfortunately. Habima Fuchs is here. Monika Pasko Mikishkova is also here as well. Aktion Van, unfortunately, uh, again, uh, not. These artists, all of them work in different areas and different perspectives. They are approaching contemporary, uh, also aesthetics, uh, also world as such, focusing on different elements, but still somehow connected via the aesthetic experience we may have in when we are really in touch with their work on, uh, or when we are dealing with things uh, they are interested in. Bodily experience, aesthetic quality, working with materials and through that think about perspective, uh, performative elements which are connected with that. Uh, uh, we were approaching this problem with different perspective but always somehow connecting uh, with Central European issues, local issues or what does that mean? Again, it's kind of a mythology and it was part of the project just to think about this kind of possibilities. 
all the papers or lectures we heard today were somehow connected with something which was built here on, let's say, a folk art, a folk aesthetic also, something which might be national, something which is somehow broadened with this historical or cultural historical um, context. But on the other hand, there were always this kind of approach to get to universal perspective, to global perspective, let's say, and use these elements more in aesthetic way, uh, even though working with some sort of metaphysics. What is lacking in contemporary art is this kind of intuitive approach and intuitive understanding, right? We are always, in a conceptual level, we are trying to approach it from different perspectives. Uh, but what I was interested in uh, was this kind of the first step is aesthetic experience from that everything else follows. So the whole concept, selection of artists, selection of works and so on was actually built on aesthetic experience and from that we can follow a different path. Uh, this means that when you enter the exhibition or where you uh, see the works and you are making some sort of nets and connections between them, like in the context of graphic print, pantographism as I mentioned at the, at the beginning, you are always working with this kind of experience at first, and then the understanding comes. Uh, another few photos uh, from, the, uh, from the installation. And now I would like to give space to artists themselves. Uh, I would like to ask them to present their work, specific project we were discussing, and from that uh, the discussion itself will follow. Uh, so you have the experience with their work also, because I think <laughs> this is kind of important, right? We were talking about artists from past and so on who are not present here. Uh, here are the raw materials and the raw projects we can discuss and somehow follow different paths. First of them would be Habima Fuchs. Uh, I will give you a floor, I will give you a space to present your work. We work with Habima for a few times now on different projects and I really admire her, her work and then we can continue with others. So if you can do it like that. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, the space that I have here and that I can present this work. I choose to present um, or to say a few words to, uh, uh, to a little film that I made in 2022 together with uh, uh, Barbora and the museum uh, in Olomouc. And uh, uh, in some way, it was also for me uh, to cross the border because I never, never um, had ambition to make a movie or something like that, because uh, I am uh, not connected to uh, technical things at all. But uh, uh, the the topic and uh, the surrounding and also the cooperation with Barbara has inspired me and gave me somehow the courage to, to cross these borders and to, uh, to, uh, to take this opportunity uh, of, uh, of making a, a new, new point, uh, actually, in my work. And, uh, ah. and uh, first I would like to uh, show you this uh, image that somehow started this cooperation. It's a, a piece of art uh, outside in the Polish city of Otwock. Uh, in Otwock, uh, uh, there has been uh, happening uh, many seasons, maybe seven seasons, of an art project made by Kasia Redish and Miroslav Balka. And uh, they invited uh, every year different artists to participate uh, and also to have a different topic. So that, uh, that season was um, somehow connected with the topic of nature and I have been invited to make uh, uh, an artwork. And uh, I came to this city, and uh, uh, the, the city is a very interesting place because, uh, as you see, there is a, a huge uh, pine forest that is many kilometers, and in the past, uh, the pine forest, uh, uh, for its good air, was used to heal many sicknesses uh, connected with the lungs. So, uh, before the war, or uh, there were many Jewish, for example, sanat sanatories, no, that, uh, and people came there to heal themselves. But uh, during the war, you know what has happened, uh, and the city become uh, empty, and, uh, and this uh, uh, terrible history of deportation and everything 
uh, took a massive place in this city. There really was like a hole, no? When, when so many people uh, that live and, and folded their work there disappeared. So uh, uh, this, uh, this kind of places, uh, what awaits them? You, you have to restore the energy no? that, was, uh, that was stolen. You have to, um, uh, to, to restore the harmony that was, uh, that was... But it couldn't happen because then the communist regime came and new things, uh, new uh, and understandable uh, events took place and, and so on. Uh, I don't want to speak too long. So uh, for me, at the end, uh, there was this thought uh, what can we do with such a situation uh, when one layer of evil lies on the other one? We have to go and to, to go back to the, to the source. We have to somehow find back the freshness that was in the beginning. No? And uh, like this, I make this artwork where, I, uh, uh, where, where we dig a well. We found the water in the four meters and we somehow uh, were finding the source to, to, to show that, uh, that uh, this is possible. And around this, uh, this well, uh, I make this labyrinth, which is the shape of an of a agave plant, because the agave plant, we know she is like that, but uh, her leaves are in a very labyrinthic order, no? like a beautiful pattern. So uh, th uh, that's why the work is called agave. Uh, I uh, didn't want that... Uh, uh, this, oh, this is another picture like from above and here, uh, sorry, uh, just to show the dimension. I didn't want that people really are entering it and uh, dis destroying this moss. So uh, uh, I created this, this is actually a outside ceramic, it's a fired ceramic but uh, fired by a, uh, directly by a fire to, to make it hard. So it's, it's like a ball that contains stones and you could take the stones and uh, find the, the well by the hearing, no? not by seeing. And uh, so the moment was very nice because you could feel the, the depth somehow, but you, you had to trust uh, another senses than just the eyes. No? So the body was more involved in it. Uh, on account of this, uh, uh, of this work, uh, I was invited to Museum of Olomouc to present Another work, something like a continuation of this, no? Like to, to, to give. And I, uh, I came up, uh, uh, and directly I came up with the idea uh, that I had for a very long time in my mind, and it was the burial of the snake, which was another motif. And this is a picture from my exhibition in uh, Berlin in 2010. Uh, made by uh, uh, ceramics. Uh, the, the exhibition is called Bestiary of Habima Fuchs and it uh, shows actually the, the violent moment uh, in, inside of humanity and the way how we actually treat each other uh, uh, but on account of uh, more medieval images of, uh, of uh, relation, relationship no? of bestiary. So all of these uh, creatures you see are uh, murdering or catching or whatever someone. No, as a, as a something that we actually live, uh, live in uh, our everyday life, unfortunately maybe. Mm -hmm. So there was also this snake that uh, uh, doesn't hunt anyone, but as you see it's a very uh, full greedy snake that just uh, 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 took many, many uh, other animals inside. And I uh, somehow knew that I would like to, uh, to bury this snake one day. So this opportunity I saw now. And uh, there is also the gesture that if you work with ceramic, you become very aware, very aware of, the, of the elements and of the connection with the earth, with the space, with water and everything. It's a very beautiful material that, uh, that gives you so much opportunity of uh, to, to explore the, the real deep meaning of elements and of our surrounding. So I also wanted somehow to, to bring back uh, something to the earth, also as a gesture. And in the same time, I wanted to, uh, to, to recreate, why to bury a snake? A snake um, is a strong symbol that has many meanings. But I decided to, uh, to, make, um, to bury the snake and to plant an apple tree. Uh, you see that uh, where it is leading us to, to a picture of paradise and actually what happened there. And uh, 
in, in our days we know that, uh, that we are not just, uh, f thanks to the new science, we know that we are not just uh, victims of uh, some events, but that we are like active uh, creators of our reality and that we are shaping our reality. So, and that we also know that, uh, that we can always rewrite our DNA and we can also rewrite in some way uh, past events in our consciousness. No? So based on, uh, on, on this, uh, I, I was thinking that uh, I will uh, make a little impulse uh, to rewrite this, uh, this story and uh, maybe to uh, take a little colibri contribution <laughs> To some, uh, to some more like uh, harmonic wo harmonious world or something. So here I show one more picture from the exhibition just uh, uh, that you see the expression uh, of it. This is a wall painting. And um, so uh, 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 the question was where can we make this, this event? It was planned as a public event. Where can it be that the tree which will be plant will stay there and, uh, and grow, etc. So uh, Barbara came with the idea to make it in Slunyakov. It's an ecological centrum close to Olomouc, very beautiful, that already contains some uh, huge artworks by Czech artists, Milošejn and František Skála. And uh, when I saw this uh, place, I was so um, inspired and also uh, uh, by the uh, place and also by the motifs that I start to write many, many new pictures uh, that are uh, ac uh, accompanying this story. So it is like, uh, you, can, uh, you can imagine this, uh, this uh, film is a narration, but uh, even if you have a small narration, like I am going to the supermarket, there is so many things that happen on your way that you perceive with your body, in your thoughts, uh, that you see and that actually are shaping the experience of this simple action of going to the supermarket. No? So this film actually is also like a narration that, but that shows also images that happens on many, uh, uh, many other dimensions of our being because we are uh, very multidimensional beings as a, yeah, like the human. So uh, uh, I was writing and writing and Barbara was supporting me and at the end we could make this, uh, this movie that is called Equinox, uh, which, uh, which is, uh, uh, as you know, some neutral position of the night and day, so a good space to, uh, to, to change something. And uh, uh, I, uh, very briefly I will say um, there is a, maybe, okay, there is the narration, the story, we bury the snake, we do it in real, the snake is there, it's under the earth, it happens really. The second uh, uh, aspect of the movie is maybe the geometry. I very much work with geometry because this is something that to all of us is very natural and we can understand a lot through geometry. So there are many circles uh, that are, because for me circle is some, uh, some very much a symbol no, of unity on, and of perfection, what can you change on circle? It's, uh, it's just already perfect. And uh, the third uh, thing is that I used uh, some passages from da Dante's Divine Comedy. So I took Dante as a, as, as, as a fellow friend that uh, helps to explain some, uh, some motives that I am uh, like uh, pursuing. So this is just, uh, the, uh, we cannot play it now, but the, just that you see a little bit the aesthetics uh, of it. Uh, here I used my own ceramic and also I made all the costumes in the, in the movie uh, and, and so on. And so at the end, uh, uh, we were going to, uh, to this shape uh, in the middle, in the triangle, there is the new planted tree and uh, we created this huge circle that also plays a role in the movie and then we plant uh, uh, many seeds. We did it together with uh, the students of some agricultural academy so that uh, at the end uh, we have a tree that is surrounded by this circular garden and that remains uh, uh, as, a, as a something uh, that, uh, that is alive and that continues to carry fruits uh, uh, for the future. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, 
and uh, giving me the space to talk. Uh, I decided to talk about the recent project uh, of mine. Um, if, yeah, I'm short. <laughs> um, it costs uh, Piercy White. Um, well, um, what you see, um, uh, the work uh, you are looking at uh, is the canvas I made in uh, cooperation uh, with uh, deaf and blind children. Uh, I see my paintings uh, with their into the final work. Uh, the exhibition took place in Kunsthalle, uh, Bratislava, last year as part of, uh, as Barbara mentioned, Oscar Chepan Prize uh, for artists uh, up to 40 years old. Um, the project started two years ago uh, and uh, ended in, well, uh, just recently. Uh, the second exhibition is still running. Um, it started uh, at the end of 2021 uh, when I first uh, contacted the, the head of the school uh, with the proposal to make uh, art therapy workshops with students uh, outdoor in their garden. Uh, it is the only school in the country that educates uh, children with uh, health uh, disadvantage like this. Uh, and I spent the uh, past two years uh, visiting them uh, in a small village uh, called uh, Cervenica. It's a five hours drive uh, from my hometown uh, at the east of uh, the country. So um, two exhibitions have been uh, dedicated to the project. Uh, one is still running in the Center for Contemporary Art, uh, Nova, Sina Nova Synagoga Zilina. Um, and uh, this is the settlement uh, from the Kusthalle, where I included drawing on the floor uh, inspired by a root system of plants uh, as an uh, expression of a mutual connection uh, um, uh, I built uh, with the children. Uh, then uh, the textile uh, butterfly objects and the ceramic work uh, I made the, with the children uh, in a glass showcase, so you can see. Um, well, uh, the mouse, uh, or as we call them in Slovakia, night butterflies, uh, became my own symbol of uh, the project, uh, as they are blind and navigated themselves uh, through the space uh, with the smell. Um, they're also, I think, uh, beautiful and uh, very fragile uh, in our human world. And uh, I started to draw them uh, while working with the children without uh, any connection to the project. Uh, but um, I learned to trust my uh, intuition and I found uh, many intersections with the project. And I kept going and it became really like the symbol of the project itself. So on this photo you can uh, see the fabric uh, mauve and a uh, few ceramics uh, I started uh, to work on at the very start of the, um, of the project. And um, uh, I, I don't have a better photo. Uh, I didn't, uh, the photographer didn't take a photo of the uh, glass showcase, but uh, what you can see, uh, that's the ceramics I made uh, during the workshops with the children. They were uh, trying to uh, draw uh, the plants. Uh, they grow in the garden close to the school. Um, uh, I always uh, put uh, mine and children works uh, into dialogue. So uh, the green one, uh, the green one is mine. <laughs> and um, so just uh, I wanted to show the relationship uh, with the children and uh, with the topic of the nature. And um, as I mentioned, we were working in the garden. Um, we were using local plants. Um, children could touch them and draw them after. Uh, first, when, when I was coming to the school, I didn't have any experience uh, with the work with the, um, this uh, disability. So I didn't know what to expect. Um, then uh, I found out uh, the most of the um, children had uh, or has uh, remains of the senses, so uh, the communication uh, was possible 
between us, and uh, it was a huge help uh, in the process, so, like from teachers. So um, when I couldn't explain something, they were always close uh, and uh, helping me uh, to explain what I want from uh, from them. Uh, what you can see here is a garden and the canvas, uh, and uh, we were making drawings with the charcoal um, of uh, of the plants and um, how do you say uh, nature products I, I brought uh, from home. Um, we have uh, with my kids we have this uh, habit that uh, that we bring uh, nature products from our vacations, so we have this huge collection at home. And, uh, and I thought it would be a nice moment to bring them uh, to the school so kids can touch them and then we were drawing them. Um, well, um, I passed these and this is, uh, we were printing uh, leaves from uh, the trees in the garden. Um, the second exhibition, which is still running, is based more on the large textile uh, compared to the first one and uh, more of this um, ceramics moths. Um, I experimented with the uh, size and uh, installation options um, uh, of, uh, of the paintings. Uh, well, what you can see is the painting of the, um, it's inspired by the caterpillars, so like butterfly caterpillars. Uh, it's it's rather abstract, but uh, um, that would. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's in, inspired by the caterpillars, and I um, I intended to make the wall uh, like fabric wall. Uh, which I placed uh, to the entry of the gallery, so uh, the visitors um, come in uh, with the contact uh, with this huge painting. It's uh, it's uh, six meters long and two meters high. Uh, that's the first what they see from the exhibition, and then the op the space open and uh, they can see the rest of the work. Uh, so. Um, uh, this uh, this uh, this work is the only one actually uh, got uh, the name. I usually don't give the names my work, but uh, this this one calls spring, and it, it means also spring of water, but also spring of wisdom, and uh, it's it's the very last work I I made uh, for this project. Uh, right now, I think it's closed. Uh, the, the, there will be um, no more a visit the, in the school. Uh, I will miss the children very much. We are in a connection, like uh, we uh, we call. Sometimes they call me. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, something I wanted to uh, I don't know uh, to make uh, the final dot after the project with this uh, painting. Uh, after what they gave me, like uh, yeah. Um, I promise to be short, so I have to be faster. Uh, this is the second canvas uh, mm, uh, we made together. Mm, the topic was coral and, um, and sea and uh, nature under the water. So um, you can see um, those um, more how you say abstract works are by kids and uh, more concrete ones are <laughs> mine. And, uh, and I have a few more slides from the exhibition and that's uh, the end. These are the corals uh, kids made and they became a part of the installation. Uh, I hope I put the slide there. I didn't. So uh, yeah, they, they became a part of uh, one installation and these are drawings. Uh, I always include drawings into m my shows. Uh, I, I draw uh, mostly on a daily basis, so they are a huge part like of my life and the daily routine. Um, there, I always inspired uh, by, or the recent ones are inspired by um, the nature you can observe under the microscope. Uh, I have very uh, close relation to science 
and uh, most uh, of my works on the paper are inspired uh, by um, this observing uh, of the plants by the microscope. So uh, these were uh, the plants uh, I observed somewhere in, uh, under the microscope. I, I spent actually uh, last year um, um, one month uh, in a research center in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, I was uh, living in a, in a wooden cabin uh, next to the tropical rainforest. Uh, and as it was a science research, a research center uh, owned by American academies, uh, I had um, the microscopes uh, I, I could uh, observe the plants. So uh, during this day and after, I, I continue to make the most of the drawings I included into the exhibition as a part of my contribution, how I see the nature. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And um, uh, it's really a great pleasure to uh, present my works um, in this context. Um, hmm. <laughs> um, I decided to present um, examples of my works that uh, show my approach and my fascinations and, um, and show how I work in my practice with different uh, inspirations and how, how I combine them. Um, as uh, Barbara mentioned, uh, drawing is a big part of my practice, and um, it all started from there. As, um, and drawing is for me a way to uh, think and then uh, reflect on, um, on inspirations, on, um, um, on what I see. And um, my focus in my works um, is everyday objects, everyday um, interiors. It's um, how we perceive our surroundings, how we accumulate our experiences, memories in objects and in our bodies, and how we react to different surfaces and colors. And uh, the material sphere of everyday life is in the center of my inspiration. And um, it's for me um, multi-layered, and it connects past and present. Um, I use um, in my works. I use materials like textiles and ceramics. I make connections with everyday objects, with traditional crafts, um, with senses, and. Um, I believe uh, very much that objects um, carry memories. And, um, um, and the materiality and scale of uh, my works um, uh, make connection with, with our bodies. I also uh, co cooperate with performers and, um, and incorporate um, choreography in my works. Um, because I believe that uh, experiencing an exhibition is an, it's a very active also um, experience. And um, in the way I create um, sculptures and installations, um, I would like the viewers to um, to feel the scale and feel the different surfaces and feel their bodies. Um, so I play with the scale. I, um, mm, sometimes it's very similar to everyday objects. Sometimes we recognize those everyday objects in the works, but sometimes um, I enlarge forms and I play with the expectations of um, viewers and um, and with, uh, with their perception. Um, in my works, I'm very much inspired by um, design. And uh, what I mean, I refer to uh, traditional crafts like weaving, pottery, and also to modern and contemporary design that shaped my um, sensitivity and uh, my visual field. And here I also mean um, um, the tradition of Polish design uh, patterns, materials that were um, part of my uh, childhood. 
And um, as you could see, um, I use textiles in my works in different ways. And I also use different kind of textiles. Some are, some are hand woven, uh, some are printed, some are um, um, hand dyed. And uh, by this, I can make associations with um, different spheres of our life and um, objects that we surround, um, clothes that we wear, furniture that, that are around us, or I can create a whole new spatial um, situations. So um, I mentioned before that I'm interested in working in different scales, and here is an example of a um, rather bigger scale. And um, mm, textiles um, allowed me to create uh, what I could call a soft architecture within hard walls. Um, um, Regarding this work, I was, uh, and other also work that I will present at the end, I was inspired by a um, uh, practice of Lili Reich and her ways of using textiles in interiors, and especially um, by her design, uh, together with Miss van der Rohe, for the Velvet and Silk Cafe from uh, 1927. And her design was described as, um, quote, a free-flowing space which is defined by textiles, and I can very much uh, relate to this. Um, uh, I also collaborate with contemporary dance choreographers and have created several set designs, and this is an example of uh, one. Um, uh, it's a theater dance piece by um, <coughs> two Polish choreographers. And this, um, this is an example that it's a very special uh, for me and it was a very special collaboration um, because it combined my interest in creating um, a spatial situation with visual means, with colors and textiles and uh, with movement and, and the active presence of audience. Um, in this piece, the audience was part of the, um, of the action. Um, um, the audience, they were both participants, creators, and viewers. And it was a very sensual experience. Um, you could call it a participatory experience, but it was more than that, I, I think. Uh, for the duration of the piece, the group of strangers uh, became a community. Um, Uh, when working on um, an exhibition, and here is an example of a solo exhibition, I'm interested in creating a situation uh, that connects works with interiors, with ar architecture, uh, with scale, um, and with viewers. Um, and in this case, I played with the scale of objects and the patterns, and um, I refer to distortion distortions that might happen in our memories and in our perception. And um, I treated the white space in between works as gaps uh, that could be filled with the presence and the movement of viewers. Um, and I would like to close this presentation with the documentation of the work uh, commissioned by the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw. Um, it's an installation um, that I created for a museum cafe. It's been part of the interior now already since five years, um, which is also for me a special case that I could see how uh, the work is um, living its everyday life uh, for how, such a long time. Um, to describe you the situation, it's a very high interior Mm, with the colors of the walls already defined by the architect. And um, the scale of the space allowed me to propose an installation that creates a whole other space above the heads of the users. And um, I use again textiles and ceramics um, because of its qualities, um, because of how I could use colors, transparency, and layers. And um, um, 
light plays a big role in experiencing the work. And in this case, it's unique because it's a mix of natural and artificial light. And its intensity changes during the day and the night during the opening hours of the, of the cafe. Thank you. Uh, maybe uh, in that case I would just start with one opening question and then give space to you to ask uh, if you'd like. And the question would be how you uh, feel yourself in your project, how you work with your own experiences, with materials, with memory, with nature and so on, because these are distant aspects and you always have to approach it somehow and then work with the work itself and build something which is autonomous in the end also, but open to others. So if you can reflect upon that, that would be very nice as a starting remarks. And you can work again with your own experiences on your past projects. <laughs> Okay, so I uh, actually, maybe you perceived it, that I'm quite interested in philosophy and uh, with some uh, main focus on the uh, human being. One, two, yeah. And uh, because of that, uh, of course, because I am a human being, I do uh, experience things through myself a lot. And uh, um, my perception of reality is actually very intensive. I thought, uh, like uh, in my youth, that it's like that for everyone. But I'm uh, now uh, aware that, uh, of course, everyone has uh, uh, another reality, uh, and that's great. And uh, um, so, uh, actually, to be able to uh, make a work, I need to really feel the work very deeply and feel uh, a complete necessity of uh, speaking about it. No? So it's not uh, that uh, I, I couldn't say that I am uh, like a playful person that creates many beautiful things one after the other. It's more that uh, I uh, do this work to really uh, find answers for myself and to share them with, uh, with other people because I think that uh, uh, or I see the, the art as a, some kind of treasure box where we uh, put our experiences no? in the collective uh, consciousness and that uh, everyone, uh, but it's not only for the art, it's for everything, but okay, the art is, uh, has a form and uh, has the meaning to do it uh, very obviously. So uh, this is uh, how I uh, perceive it. So I want to actually contribute to, the, uh, to our, uh, our collective uh, experience and to yeah, maybe uh, expand it in some ways or uh, bring some points of my understanding that I uh, perceive through uh, studies and through uh, immediate experience because um, uh, I want also to say it was maybe around the year 2008 I made an exhibition that was called uh, The Labyrinth of the World which is ba based, uh, the title is based on a philosophical essay by Johann Amos Comenius, one of the most uh, interesting person from Bohemia, and in my view. And uh, uh, okay, it's a story about a pilgrim that uh, goes and wants to discover the world. And so it was also for me uh, important to make kind of mapping of the world and to to, to see it, what is it, uh, why, why, why we are here, what we are actually doing here, and, and so on. And in this moment when I was uh, thinking about this, I thought that uh, for me it would be relevant to make a, a kind of real experience and to really uh, go through the world. So I, for example, on account of these thoughts, I start to uh, make many pilgrimages and I was uh, walking, I was... Uh, uh, experiences uh, several years of nomadic life and, and, and so on. So this immediate experience that nourishes uh, my work is also important or uh, through a study or uh, through uh, also some uh, practices uh, like uh, um, that, that, that I learn and do and so on. Is it okay like that? It's perfect, thank you. Uh, if you'd like to add anything or if you'd like to ask uh, anything, it's up to you. Um, to 
tell, um, to tell you about my perspective. Um, I think my sensitivity to, to, um, to materials, to colors, uh, it's something that it's like um, um, inspires me also to, to create works. And um, I believe that in, in everyday life, this kind of sensitivity, um, this kind of um, um, maybe slowness to, um, to observe things, to appreciate uh, materials and, and surfaces that we have around, it's something very enriching our, um, our, um, our life. And, um, and that's, that's what I want to um, emphasize in my works. And I believe that um, by perceiving the and experiencing um, um, spatial situations, spatial uh, installations, sculptures, um, it can enrich us and our perception of our everyday life. Um, well, I'll, I don't know how to describe uh, exactly what I want to say, but um, I have very uh, close to uh, exact science. Uh, I think uh, because uh, since I uh, I was a child, uh, I always had the feeling that um, that I have too much emotions, and uh, and science uh, helped me um, reading about researches uh, to somehow uh, control like those uh, those feelings on or to have um, to keep distance from from it. Uh, so, uh, I think this relationship just um, continued to the adulthood and uh, right now uh, I got uh, very often inspired uh, by uh, somebody research. Um, well, recently I found this very interesting uh, ethnobotanist uh, scientist. Uh, her name is Renata Sokant. Uh, she's an uh, Estonian uh, scientist. Uh, Right now, she does a very uh, interesting research uh, for me in Estonia on the islands uh, about uh, relationship uh, like people to the plants and about the knowledge, like how it's uh, passing through the generations. And um, uh, she is a professor in uh, in Venice, and uh, I keep in touch with her, and we are writing, and I plan to uh, visit her during the summer on her research in Estonia. Um, but um, if I have to say like uh, how um, <laughs> how it connects uh, to my work, um, I I would say that uh, I like to do things uh, with my hands, and uh, that's something uh, that is the need I have. So uh, I I like to um, transfer the experience like uh, from the knowledge uh, like uh, through just making art that uh, that I observe, uh, you know, it's like those, uh, for example, science, you know, uh, uh, pictures, and and I see their um, beauty, which um, you know, it's not that geometrical, but uh, it creates uh, images in my mind. So, um, yeah, and because uh, I, I I always think like how lucky I am that I have the vision that I can see. Um, I don't know why this question is always appearing, like uh, you know, like uh, in my um, in my uh, life or in my thoughts. Um, I when I when I was a teenager, I used to uh, volunteer in a, in a school for blind kids. Uh, also, just the reason was uh, that I that I thought that I am lucky that I have vision. So. Um, uh, from time to time, I just include like uh, these uh, thoughts, like to um, uh, yeah, to my creative process. Thank you very much. Uh, all crossing borders, I think. So there is one question, right? Or? Yeah. What quick question? What does crossing borders mean to you? Maybe it's like very brief. Well, uh, if you 
imagine that you go from one country to another, which is the simplest example of crossing border, uh, it expands uh, somehow your experience. And like this, uh, uh, it, but you don't need to cross the border like in, in the reality. You can, uh, every time when you uh, bring yourself somehow from, from some surroundings that you live in, you already cross the border and uh, it, uh, uh, you create more space. I think for this is. No? Um, for me, it's to move between the, the the two dimensions to three dimensions to from the static to movement, and uh, it might. I don't think it's it's obvious, and I don't think it's still obvious for us to um, to actively experience um, what, what we see, and I think it's it's constantly close crossing borders of our um, um, expectations and um, our um, routines of, of looking. So I would say it's, uh, yeah, crossing borders of um, how we perceive things and how we um, can reflect on um, our um, routines. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, crossing borders uh, means uh, the interdisciplinarity um, to finding uh, uh, inspiration in uh, different departments and um, to bring them together. Like um, for me, uh, the inspiration is, is everywhere. I mean, uh, it's uh, science and history in, the, in the sociology and um, and I try to just uh, put uh, all together and find uh, for me something and to create the work which uh, implement uh, all those things together. Well, thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you so much. It, it was a perfect, uh, um, I think, conclusion of a symposium. Um, we have worked historically uh, on different, as you have noticed uh, in the last two days, uh, with women who cross borders from one, world, from one country to another, from one continent to another, given different historical situations. Um, it's clear that uh, there are different levels of crossing borders, mentally crossing borders historically, um, also scientifically that allows us also you spoke about broadening um, the perspectives or our mental experiences. You spoke about physical experiences, how we, we challenge ourselves also in space. And uh, what was so amazing about Monica, about yours, or also about working with uh, children with disabilities and how they perceive, I, I don't know if you experienced it in the same way, but it was very strong this kind of a, a dialogues that you created with them through art that was also crossing borders because it's another experience. You challenge yourself looking from their eyes or, look, yeah, or looking for their experience. So this ability also to cross from one person to another in a very physical and artistic, you know, as an inspiration. This was also, um, for me, um, whatever your work was an awakening in many ways on different levels um, so thank you very much um, also the idea you spoke uh, um, Lily about art and design yeah we saw it so many um, especially with Alicia how we could work with the artistic with the de designing through art like you work with this um, curtains and, and the idea that curtains that you usually use to, <laughs> to hide, uh, to, to, to cover the window or to limit your space or to you, you work it in design and you show the different possibilities of working with design in an art way that challenges it as a function of even bordering spaces, yeah, that the, the movement. So in many ways we have this fascinating crossover from art to design that we appreciated. Um, a lot and thank you very much. Um, I think it, I don't need to do a concluding word because we have it. We, we really, I think, was the best way to conclude our symposium. And thank you very much for staying to the last minute. Thank you very much for participating.